It's been a year, but what a restless fucking year it's been. Ever since I stopped torturing myself by playing these abominations that game developers have the audacity to call games, I haven't been able to get these fucking things out of my head. I'm not even kidding around. So you know what? I'm gonna do this one more time. These thoughts aren't going away anytime soon without being addressed. So you know what? Might as well get it over with. Now the games that have been creeping into my mind though, may surprise you. But then again, they might not either, since I can't request to do these games all the fucking time. Yeah, all I get is, hey, can we get a modern game? Hey, how about a modern game? Hey, so how about the modern game? Hey, let's get a modern game. You fuckers want modern? You can't get much more modern than the one I'm about to play. Yeah, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. Now believe it or not, I got requests to do this game all the time, even back when it was first released in 2009. I don't know if it's because it's one of the most popular games of the 2000s, or because it sucks, but my YouTube inbox was flooded with requests to do this game. Well, it's time. Let's see what all the fuss is about. You power up the game and are given three options. Campaign, Special Ops, and Multiplayer. I'm sure most people want me to play multiplayer, so let's do that. You're given a number of different modes to play in, but a number of them are locked until you're at a higher rank, so let's just stick to Team Deathmatch. In this mode, the objective is simple. KILL EVERYBODY! Team There's two teams of six people, and the first team to reach 7500 points is the winner. You can choose a pre-made class, or you can make your own once you hit rank 4. There's assault rifles, submachine guns, light machine guns, sniper rifles, and the riot shield. You can customize the gun by adding attachments on it, and you could also give it a paint job. There's also a few perks to select from, which are basically power-ups to your class. On paper, it seems like a good idea. Whether or not it turns out to be good in execution remains to be seen. There's one problem I have right off the bat. You can't run for more than three seconds. Are you kidding me? It's a freaking nightmare getting around the map when you're stopping every few seconds. Why can't they have the running last longer? I thought these were supposed to be badass soldiers. Who can only run for three seconds at a time? And don't give me that excuse they're wearing lots of heavy armor or bullshit like that. Oh yeah, that shit is wearing and looks really heavy. The only way to get around this problem is by using Marathon, which is a perk. It's a pain in the ass. Another thing that's fucked up is that knifing someone kills them instantly. Yep, that's right. In the world of Call of Duty, stabbing someone is more lethal than shooting them. But you want to know what really pisses me off? What the hell happened? The heartbeat sensor. That's what happened. There's an attachment on a gun that allows you to locate nearby enemies. What a piece of dog shit. The only way to counter that is to have Ninja as a perk. But, well... Fuck me sideways and call me Trevor. I don't have it unlocked. But you know what's really fucked up? What's really just a fucking douchebag move of them to do? There's a perk called stopping power. And look at that! Increased bullet damage. Increased bullet damage. Who's gonna pick something different? When you have a perk that makes your bullets stronger, naturally, you're gonna gravitate towards that. I mean, it makes sense. I mean, it'll make your kills happen in three bullets instead of, say, five. Now, yeah, they may not sound like a hell of a difference, but let me tell you, when you get into an encounter with somebody that's rocking stopping power or you're not, guess who wins? I'll give you a hint. It's not you. Another game mode that's okay is Headquarters. In this mode, your goal is to get 250 points. You do that by holding the HQ for as long as you can. Once your team has the HQ, you don't respawn until either the time expires or the enemy destroys the headquarters. How in the hell did none of those shots hit him? HOW?! And take a look at this cockadookie. If you die enough times, you go on a death streak. This class in particular has copycat. 
Yep, it's just as stupid as it sounds. When you die, you press Y to copy your killer's class, as if that would make a bit of fucking difference. I've never heard of something like that. Imagine if it's Super Mario Brothers. If you kept dying, instead of getting game over, the game gave you more continues. Actually, that sounds awesome, so that's a pretty shitty example. Oh, and this bullshit. Quick scoping. This fucking community is infested with this crap. You get yourself a sniper rifle, side of Pam Pro, and sniping power, and you become a killing machine. You scope in for a second, and then you shoot, and then BAM! Your enemy's dead. Imagine how fucking stupid quickscoping would look in real life. This team is a bunch of ass, so let's check out one more game of that's really popular. Search and Destroy. <laughs> well, isn't that wonderful? There's a kid who sounds like he's less than 12 in this lobby. And am I missing something here? The game is rated M for Mature, that is, nobody under the age of 17 should be on this game, and yet there's some 10 year old fuckface on it. It's shit like this that makes soccer moms exist. Yeah, the soccer moms. What they do is they go to the video game store and then they buy a game like this for their 10 year old little kid. And then when they go home and they see what their 10 year old kid is able to do in the game, they get pissed off. Hey, look at this. I bought this game for my little Johnny, my little 10 year old Johnny, and he's shooting and killing people in it. This is unacceptable. I want this game banned. Yeah, sure, let's blame the game, not your shitty parenting for buying an M rated game in the first place for your 10 year old little Johnny. Perfect logic. So anyway, Search and Destroy, probably the most popular mode in this piece of shit series. One team has to plant the bomb at one of two locations and destroy the base while the other team defends the locations. No respawns. In all honesty, it's a pretty fun game mode. But that's not to say it doesn't have its own share of bullshit. Like this jackass. He's the only teammate left alive. And what's he doing? He's humping the fucking air and looking around like an asshole and cowering in the corner like a pussy. Basically, he's doing the exact opposite of what he should be doing. And what does this shit for brains asswa do when the bomb is planted? The one thing that any logical person would do. Tosses a C4 and kills himself. You fucking prick. So what do you do when that happens? You take matters into your own hands. Yeah, I took down four of the enemy single fucking handedly. Sometimes you'll get really lucky, like I did right here. I got a care package and it turns out to be a county UAV. A second later, the enemy gets UAV. Well not anymore you bunch of fucks. And eventually, you win. Do I feel accomplished? No. No, I don't. Mission accomplished. 1v1 well me. 1v1 me. 1v1 me. 1v1 me. Seriously? Is that all this fucking community ever says? All the time, everywhere you go, all you hear is 1v1 me, 1v1 me. It's like... You know... I'm not even going to say anything about this. You want to know why? Because I have a picture that sums up the whole thing. Yeah. A picture is worth a thousand words. Let's look at capture the flag. The goal is to, um, capture the flag. This mode really lets you see just how full of fuck the community in this game is, because almost nobody plays for the objective. Am I missing something here? If you're gonna play an objective-based game, then play for the objective! Go to Team Deathmatch before you give a shit about his getting kills. More often than not, I'm the only one on my team playing for the objective. And since nobody gives a fuck about their own team's safety, it feels more like a 6 one handicap match than anything. There's two problems I have with this mode. Firstly, assholes like this. They go prone in the grass so you can't even see them, and then they aim at the flag. I understand that they're defending their flag, but it doesn't piss me off any less. Secondly, this. You've got to wait seven seconds to respawn. I don't know, maybe I sound like an impatient jackass right now, but when you're really into the game and then suddenly die and have to wait seven seconds, it just sucks the energy right out of you. Marathon is essential for capture the flag. So you're not forced to run, then walk, then run, then walk all the fucking time. Especially when you're the one with the flag. So, anyway. I head back to the fucking flag, I kill the piece of shit who killed me, pick up the flag, and then BAM, I capture it. 
Just the thought of doing all of that crap while running and stopping like a stupid asshole makes me want to punch a wolf in the fucking face. So not a single one of my bullets hit that guy? This game is a pile of monkey fuck. Believe it or not, there's not a single attempt at a flag capturing from either team for the rest of the game. <laughs> what a surprise, right? Well, at least my team wins. What the hell was that? <laughs> well, man. Well, if the game disconnecting and therefore negating everything I just did isn't the cherry on the fucking shit Sunday, then I don't know what is. It's always awesome when you're kicking ass, doing really well, and are the only goddamn reason for your team winning, only to have the game say, Whoa, you're about to win? Well, not anymore, asshole. Ha! I'm running on empty with this piece of shit, so let's close out Modern Warfare 2 with a game of domination. Well, isn't it fun when you run into a camper, Mr. Cheese Doodle? Alright, no problem. I'll get you, you fucking piece of shit. Just toss a grenade into the window. Urgh! Little bastard. I don't care if it's the last thing I'm gonna do. I'm gonna get you back. Oh yeah. Just you wait, Mr. Cheese Doodle. There's no escaping me now, you monkey fuck. Well, got a hit marker, so that means I heard him. I'm going in to finish the job. Ah, That's the third time this camping son of a bitch has killed me! Well, Mr. Cheese Doodle, kill me once, shame on you. Kill me twice, shame on me. But kill me three times? You've made it personal. Ah, oh, what the hell? He's gone without a trace. Fine, you fucking pussy. Kill me four times? I just got my ass handed to me by a guy whose name is Mr. Cheese Doodle. <laughs> you know what? That's where I draw the line. The only thing worse than a shit stain of a game is an asshole like Mr. Cheese Doodle who camps his ass up and gets easy kills. Well, let's see if Black Ops is any better. Moving on to Call of Duty Black Ops for the PlayStation 3. I'd show you more of this game, but unfortunately, or maybe it's for the best, there aren't many players in this game. I mean, it did come out three years ago. I spent more time waiting to get into games than I actually did in a game. I played one game, Team Deathmatch. Hackers are probably my favorite perk in this game because you can see where enemy equipment is and can therefore avoid it or destroy it. What? Let's look at that again. Okay, so a flash grenade made the claymore inactive at the exact time I was passing it, so it didn't flash red to warn me, and then became activated as soon as I was within its exploding radius. That. Is. Bullshit. It's times like this when I want to break my fucking TV. There's also wager matches, which were new to Black Ops. It's basically like gambling. You get COD points, which is the currency system in this game, and you can bet a certain amount that you'll come out in the top three in four different games. I spent half an hour trying to get into a lobby, but no luck. That's actually a shame, because wager matches are probably my favorite mode in this shitload fuck of a game. Well, that's not fair to say, because, in all honesty, Black Ops wasn't that bad of a game, but I've got a vendetta against Call of Duty. As a whole, Call of Duty defies logic more than any game I've ever played. The community in this game sucks ass more than a professional ass sucker would. In fact, there's an ongoing joke around the internet that instead of Call of Duty, COD stands for Children's Online Daycare, because that's exactly what it feels like. There's more kids on this game than anything else. I guess this <clears throat> M for Mature sticker is on there for shits and giggles. Black Ops 2 came out two years later, 2012. Unlike the first Black Ops, which took place during the Cold War, this one takes place in the future, but only 10 years into the future. In this game, you could assign two perks to a slot, as this game went by a point system. I'll give credit where it's due, you can come up with some unique setups, therefore requiring strategy, since regardless of what you pick as perks, your class isn't going to do as well in situations where your perks won't help you. One thing I don't like is the fact that Treyarch took cut points out of Black Ops 2. Can I ask why? Cut points is one of my favorite things from Call of Duty, and they take it out? 
But if there's one thing I fucking love about this game, it's the fact that stopping power was removed. Try telling that to these guys though. I just joined this game of Team Deathmatch and I start mowing through these people. <laughs> he shot me first too. It's nice when Call of Duty's infamous lack of logic works in your favor. I almost feel bad for these guys. They must think I'm a fucking asshole. I really don't know why I didn't die there. Another new gameplay mode introduced in Black Ops 2 is Hardpoint. <laughs> How do you like that? I'm thrown into a game that's almost over. Don't you just love it when that happens? Well anyway, Hardpoint works similarly to Headquarters. There's an area on the map that you have to be in for as long as possible to earn points. And if an enemy comes into the area, you stop earning points until the enemy is killed. Each hard point lasts a minute. I'm doing really shitty, but I hate this map, so that's enough of this shit. Playing some demolition now. In this mode, you gotta destroy both bases or defend them. I don't know why in the holy mother of fuck they decided to include Nuketown as one of the maps for this mode. It's such a small map that it's nearly impossible to even plant the bomb, let alone destroy the base. All that's gonna happen is you're gonna die, 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 and die some more. Once you do destroy one of the bases though, you might as well just sit in the fucking corner and wait for time to run out, because the likelihood of doing it again to the other base, especially when you're in this fuck heap of a map, is about as likely as sneezing with your eyes open. No matter what, there's always gonna be enemies running in on you trying to plant the bomb. Let me tell you, there's nothing more frustrating in demolition than planting the bomb and only needing half a second more to complete planting the bomb only to have an enemy waltz on in and kill you. Wouldn't be so bad if Nuketown wasn't available for demolition! But no, of course it is. Step up. <sighs> well, we're on the home stretch now. One more Call of Duty left, and it's Modern Warfare 3. So let's get it over with so I can wash my hands from playing these miserable pieces of excrement and not feel so fucking filthy. I jump into a game of Kill Confirmed. In progress, of course. The goal in Kill Confirmed is to pick up the dog tags your enemies drop when they die, therefore confirming the kill and earning a point. Now look at this, this dumbass is using a shotgun. I suppose he's pissed off that's not doing a damn thing to me, but it's like, what do you expect? Shotguns are meant for close range. Oh, yeah, thanks for taking my dog tags, you fucknut. You wanna see some shit? That right there. That is in the top five of Call of Duty's problems. The grenade launcher attachment, more commonly referred to as the noob tube. You get yourself that attachment and you're guaranteed an easy kill. No skill involved. It was even more of a piss off in Modern Warfare 2 because if you use scavenger, you could actually replenish the grenades that you used. I guess they realized how fucked up that was for this game since you can't do that in this game. Why not just remove it? And this. The screen flashes white for a brief moment when an EMP is detonated, shutting down electronics for the enemy team. Why does it have to flash white for me? It's not affecting me, so why bother potentially fucking up my focus? I can't even count how many times I've been on a hot streak, and then that horse shit happens, fucking me up enough to be killed by an enemy a split second later. Moving on to face off. It's a special 3 on 3 or 2 on 2 mode that has its own maps to play in. It's the same thing as the other modes, only now the teams are reduced to half their size. It's an okay mode, I actually kind of prefer it sometimes because I feel that the face-off maps are better than the regular maps. The only problem is you run the risk of running into much more clans in face-off, which I can't stand. Ugh, I suck against clans. Going into 2 vs 2 face-off. You can get really fucked up the dick in 2 vs 2 since you can be partnered up with a new guy who doesn't know what the fuck he's doing. But luckily, that doesn't happen an awful lot. Looks like the enemy got a new guy though, since I planted the bomb and he's just shooting on the opposite side of the map. Okay? Is he gonna do anything? Or do I just have to lay here like a jackass? Either he's new or he's a fucking idiot. Oh, okay, so with less than 10 seconds left to spare, he decides to make the move. Even if he did kill me, he still wouldn't have been able to defuse the bomb. Call of Duty is also an opportunity for gymnasts to showcase their skill. Oh, look, I'm partnered up with a quickscoper. How terrific. Oh. Okay, I've got to admit, that was actually kind of impressive. 
So we looked at a handful of Call of Duty games that I happen to have that people have specifically requested of me. We looked at Modern Warfare 2, Modern Warfare 3, Black Ops, and Black Ops 2. For some reason, these games are just so popular, it begs the question, why? The fact that there are superior games out on the market, such as Battlefield, only makes it more confusing. But no, I know why. Call of Duty is a pick it up and play kind of game. It's like having an arcade game at home. You can just go wild and don't have to strategize or anything like that. No. There's no learning curve or no skill involved. You can just shoot, shoot, and shoot. Plus, it's fast paced. Battlefield places more of an emphasis on realism, whereas Call of Duty is anything but realistic. Yeah, it's got that realistic quick scoping. And hey, can't forget about the jam. <laughs> yeah, when soldiers in Call of Duty are close to death, they spread jam all over their face. <laughs> and yeah, I know it's supposed to be blood or whatever, but guess what? It's a fucking joke. Now, since I basically just gave it out, I feel the need to address this. You guys just saw my Xbox Live account name, but unfortunately, I wouldn't recommend adding me as a friend on that. For two reasons. Firstly, I suck at the games, and two, my Xbox Live membership expires in February, and I don't plan on renewing it since I don't really play Xbox often enough to justify the membership. And that PSN account you saw while I was playing the first Black Ops? Yeah, I wouldn't recommend friending me on that one either since I'm barely on that one at all. But before we put down Call of Duty, let's take a quick look at zombies. What, you thought I'd forget to play the best mode? Were you crazy? First introduced in World at War in 2008, zombies put the player in a map infested with zombies. The first map was called Nocturne and Toten, which translates to Night of the Undead in English. When you beat the campaign, after the credits, you just appeared in this mode with no explanation or warning. You're just in some abandoned building with barricaded areas where zombies break into. There's something really spooky about seeing zombies off in the distance. Makes me feel eerie as hell. There's weapons on the wall that you could buy once you earn enough points. You start out with 500 by default, and you earn more by inflicting damage on the zombies or by barricading the windows. I always found that strange. I figured that barricading the windows would require you spend points instead of earning them, but what a good thing. There's also the infamous help door, or maybe it says hell, but with the second L upside down. There's lots of speculation of whether it says help or hell, but I see it as help. Once you accumulate a thousand points, you can open the door, but that also opens more places for the zombies to break into, so you gotta be careful. In here, you'll find the mystery box. It costs 950 points, and when you use it, it gives you a random weapon that you can either take or leave. This thing is a pain in the ass online, because everybody always hovers over this fucking thing. The popularity of this mode spawns several different maps. Treyarch would release downloadable content that contained a number of multiplayer maps, usually four, and also one additional zombie map. The first one was Verrucht. It's German for insane, and, well, that's exactly the setting. You're in some insane asylum. The second map was Shinonuma, Japanese for Swamp of Death. Like the name suggests, this map takes place in a swamp. This map also introduced Hellhounds, but I died before I got up to the Shinonuma, so here they are on the next map, Der East, which means the giant in German. They're big fucking dogs that come from hell, hence hellhounds. This map is also the first map to feature the Pack of Punch machine, which can be used to upgrade your weapon for 5,000 points. To unlock the machine, you have to find four different teleporters on the map and activate the teleporter and connect it to the mainframe. That meant having to either run all the way back to the mainframe in 30 seconds or having a teammate at the mainframe to connect them for you. Once you connect all four of them, you will unlock the Pack of Punch machine. Treyarch seemed to want to outdo themselves with each map, with gimmicks and excessive shit that wasn't necessary. The prime example for that is Moon. You start out in some random location, which some people say is Area 51, but it's just a decoy. After a few seconds, an alarm goes off and the zombies go ape shit. You run into a teleporter, which teleports you to the moon. Since there's no gravity, you obviously float a lot, and when you do the famous dolphin dive, you can dive all the way across the room. There's the usual zombies you've got to kill, but then there's this guy. He walks like he's got a dump ass. He appears at the start of round two. Some big fucking astronaut who stalks you the entire game. I'm not kidding, he never disappears. If you come into physical contact with him, he grabs you and headbutts you so fucking hard that you appear in a random location of the map, but since I don't have any locations unlocked yet, I just appear in a different area of the room. 
I've got no ammo anyway, so I'm gonna head to the door to unlock it. Need the juice. Oh, how perfect! I ran enough to the point where it automatically went sailing through the fucking sky and I get killed by one of the enemies. See, this is the problem with zombies. They added so much unnecessary horse shit that they fucked it up. There's an expression that goes, less is more. They really should have stuck with that. I mean, did we really need zombies on the moon? We go from an abandoned building that's actually fitting for a game mode like zombies, all the way to being on the goddamn moon. Boy oh boy, did that escalate quickly. Well, Black Ops 2 continued the tradition of zombies, but the only map worth mentioning is Transit. Treyarch had announced that zombies would have its own campaign mode. Being a huge zombies fan, I was immediately interested. I had imagined something like Left 4 Dead, but with a Call of Duty zombie style instead. I was hyped as hell. Instead of that, we got this. You start out in some random bus station and you play as some annoying asshole. This location should take no time at all for Marlton. Dun dun dun! Engineer of Destiny! You make your way out the station and board this bus where this piece of shit is driving. Some robotic skeleton who doesn't seem to shut his fucking mouth. Consolidated Coach Corporation bus log. If you knife him enough, he gets pissed off. Authorities have been alerted to your destructive actions. The bus stops at random locations where you piece together some bullshit and uncover the truth about zombies, but I've never gotten far enough to actually do it, so fuck it. Zombies was an awesome addition to World at War that carried on to Black Ops, but they had to fuck it up with Black Ops 2. There's a saying that goes, if it's too good to be true, then it is. And that about sums it all up. Hooray Activision. Anyway, we've gotten the Call of Duty requests out of the way, so now I have a question for you guys. How do you wash down the taste of a bad game? With another bad game. <laughs> oh yeah, we're scraping the bottom of the fucking barrel this time. It's like being starving and then being given a dead rat to eat. How could a game based on the show be bad? Your jimmies are gonna be rustled. There's more of them coming. We need to go now. And be quiet sneaking out the back door. Don't let them see you. These abominations that developers have the audacity to be called games. I haven't been able to get these fucking things in a year. But what a restless fucking year it's been. It's been a year. But what a restless fucking year it's been. Ever since this. It's been a year. But what a restless fucking year it's been. Ever since I stopped torturing myself by playing these. It's been a year. Well, what a restless fucking year it's been. Ever since that. It's been a year. Well, what a restless fucking year it's been. Ever since I stopped torturing myself by playing these abominations that game developers just so. Blah, 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 blah. It's been a year. Well, what a restless fucking year it's been. Ever since I stopped torturing myself by playing. <sighs> it's been a year. But what a restless fucking year it's been. <laughs> it's been a year. But what a restless fucking year it's been. Ever since I stopped torturing myself by a plummy year. But what a restless fucking year it's been. Ever since I stopped torturing myself by pulling these abominations that game playing, playing you fuck. That's where I draw the line. The only thing worse than a shit stand of a game is an asshole like Mr. J bleh.